Paula. So. I think you can come up to about here, maybe. Just draw back. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. Can you please take your seats as this evening's presentation is about to begin. Before we begin formal proceedings, would you kindly make sure that all mobile forms of communication are switched to silent.
Tschüss.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. Can you please take your seats as this evening's presentation is about to begin. Before we begin formal proceedings, would you kindly make sure that all mobile forms of communication are switched to silent. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. Can you please take your seats as this evening's presentation is about to begin. Before we begin formal proceedings, would you kindly make sure that all mobile forms of communication are switched to silent.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. Can you please take your seats as this evening's presentation is about to begin. Before we begin formal proceedings, would you kindly make sure that all mobile forms of communication are switched to silent. Hey guys, welcome to the World 50 Best Restaurants 2023 in Valencia!
Ladies and gentlemen, could I please ask you to give the warmest of welcomes to the Director of Content for the World's 50 Best Restaurants, Mr. William Drew. Buenas noches, amigos y amigas. Bienvenidos a Valencia. Welcome everybody to the world's 50 best restaurants 2023 sponsored by San Pellegrino and Aquapana. Here in the beautiful sunny Mediterranean city and region of Valencia, España, this entire event is a celebration, a celebration of great talent, of resilience and teamwork, of diverse cuisines and culinary cultures. So we welcome all of you in this stunning auditorium at Les Arts in the City of Arts and Sciences. And thank you to Santiago Calatrava for designing this space for us. Now, for those of you who have traveled from across the world to be here, chefs, restaurateurs, writers, partners, food lovers, we genuinely appreciate your efforts to be here. And also welcome to everyone joining on the live stream from around the world. From east to west, here goes. Yokoso, Huan Ying, Swagat, Mahaban, Willkommen, Welcomen, Benvenuti, Bienvenu, Beng Vindo, Ven Bingut, E Claro, Bienvenidos. Okay. Let's crack straight on by celebrating those restaurants ranked from 51st to 100th in the world. This extension of the world's 50 best restaurants list is created from the same academy of almost 1,100 experts spread across the globe. This list was first announced earlier this month. So here's a recap of the ranking. Congratulations to all those featured on the 51 to 100 list, a superb achievement and the majority of those just listed are represented here this evening 
So everyone in the house, from the restaurants, from the 51 to 100, please stand up and take a bow. So there is one restaurant in particular that does deserve a special mention. It has appeared on the world's 50 best restaurants list for the last 17 years, which is quite remarkable. And its chef and his wife, who's run the front of house with such grace, are soon departing the restaurant they have led for more than three decades. They are an inspirational pair. Unfortunately, they are unable to be with us in person, but I know that they are watching so let's show our appreciation for the restaurant, Hof van Cleef, and for the legendary Peter and Lieber Hussens. <laughs> Peter and Lieber, bedankt for alles. Now, a reminder that the list is created by the votes of 1,080 anonymous experts, gender balance experts from across the entire globe, and the results are independently adjudicated by Deloitte. I would like to thank our 27 Academy Chairs who head up the voting panels in the different parts of the world for their tireless work. Thank you. Now, for two of that number, this is their final World's 50 Best event as an Academy Chair before passing on the baton. So, a particular thanks to Evelyn Chen from Singapore, who has worked with us for almost a decade on both the World's 50 Best and on Asia's 50 Best. And then to a legend who has been our longest serving Academy Chair of them all. He must have started as a very young man. He's from a land down under. Our sincere appreciation goes to Mr. Pat Nurse. Thank you so much for everything. Very sadly, the food world lost one of its own this year, also from Australia, and we mark the passing of chef, author, and culinary researcher, as well as father and husband, Jock, Jock Zonfrilla. A proud Scotsman, Jock became a major figure in Australia's gastronomic scene through his TV appearances, his acclaimed restaurant, Orana in Adelaide, and his important work to catalogue and promote Australia's indigenous, indigenous ingredients and culinary heritage. And for those of us who worked with him, travelled with him, and ate with him, this charismatic and sometimes controversial figure will not be forgotten. May he now rest in peace. The culinary world also lost another far too young with the tragic death from a sudden illness of Antti Lucari. The executive chef of Franzen in Stockholm, who also worked previously at Geranium in Copenhagen, Antti was a talent in the kitchen and a friend to so many beyond too. We salute you, chef. Okay, we will shortly continue with the awards and the official countdown of the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. Before that, I must thank our hosts here in Valencia, and we are honored to be joined by Maria Jose Catala and Tony Gaspar, among others, from Valencia. I think we can all agree that this is a wonderful city and region in which to gather, eat, drink, and celebrate together. So, muchas gracias. Thank you also indeed to all our superb partners whose support, allow us, whose support allows us to create this important ranking and present the series of, of events held over recent days, from 50 Best Talks yesterday to the 50 Best Signature Sessions and much else besides. They are listed on the big screen behind me. They are led by, you guessed it, our favorite fine dining water company and longtime main sponsor, San Pellegrino and Aquapana.
To create the very best dining experiences, you bring the best of yourself to the table. You bring your intense passion for excellence and your thoughtful capacity for caring. You bring your tireless exploration of good taste and your love of togetherness. It all began with your unique talent and your dreams for the future. And now, for the world's best, a dream is about to come true. So it's time for us all to bring our best and celebrate the winners of 50 Best. Okay, it's just about time for me to hand over to your host for the remainder of the evening. When you share your stories, reels, TikToks, and whatnots on social media, don't to get you, forget to use the hashtag Worlds50Best, please. You are all influenced tonight, whether you like it or not. So let's go viral in all the right ways. Thank you all once again for being here. Now let me introduce your host for the evening. She's a journalist and broadcaster based here in Spain, and she's half English and half Spanish. Some might say the perfect combination. Please give a warm welcome to Olivia Frejo. Thank you, William. Good evening. Good evening to you all. It's an honor to be here tonight. I'm an absolute food lover. I think it's probably what I care most about in my whole life. I hope my husband and kids are not watching. And so hosting the Food Oscars in Valencia, which is the city where I fell in love, is a perfect combination. This majestic... <laughs> Thank you. It's true. This majestic auditorium called the Palace of Arts was built originally as an opera venue, but it's not the fourth art we are honoring tonight. It's the culinary art, in my opinion, the eighth form of art. Chefs and restaurant teams, you make life a living tasty and sweet. Thank you for doing what you do. I'm sure you're all in love by now with Valencia and its famous dish made with rice, paella. Here's a brief taste of this wonderful location. There were no two lovers like us in Valencia. But what of all the things there were? Because while they loved each other from morning to night, we have loved our land in the healthiest way, tirelessly from season to season. Because every season, whether it's winter or summer, spring or autumn, give us something better than the last. Something that just as you start to enjoy it, bids you farewell until later or until next year. And that makes you want it even more. Because there is something eternal in everything fleeting in Valencia that makes us never want to leave her. That makes us want to come back every time. Valencia, eternal and seasonal. Estupendo. Now, before we crack on with the countdown and the awards themselves, first, a few points of order. There will be a post-event celebration. They will continue back in Calle Mayor. That's where you all came from. So please return there for plenty of food, plenty of drinks, and plenty of fun. Unless, that is, you are a member of the media, as there will be a press conference straight after the ceremony with the representatives of number one, whatever that will be. And you will be directed to the terrace, that's where it will take place. You will be directed by the media team. The terrace is just over there. And later on, most importantly, there will be an after party. This is Spain. 
Your wristbands will grant you access to the event, provided the venue is not at capacity. And it is taking place at Lumbracle, which is immediately next to the reception space, so you can't miss it. And finally, chefs and restaurant teams in the 50 best, first, wow, and well done. Second, in case you are as new to this as I am, when your restaurant um, is announced, this is what you'll do. You'll stand up and wave to the audience, you'll wave to the people at home, you'll hopefully see yourself in this big screen over here, and then once you've blown your kisses, high-fived, etc., you'll sit down again, and then we'll say something nice about your restaurant. Of course. <laughs> The exception is if your restaurant or you individually has won a special prize, we'll try to make that obvious, obvious enough in case you've had a few cocktails of Agua de Valencia. In that case, you will come up to the stage through those stairs over there. You'll come and receive a trophy. You'll have a photo taken just by the 2023 here on this logo. And then you'll return to your seat. No speeches. Sorry. Okay, so, are we ready? Let's start with our first award of the evening. As with last year, many of the special prizes will be presented by former award winners, including those from the best of the best restaurants that have topped this ranking over its 20-year history. We kick off with an extremely important award, namely the Flor de Caña Sustainable Restaurant Award, which is supported by our premium and ultra-sustainable Nicaraguan rum partner. This is open to any restaurant that's on the 50 best list from 1 to 100. The establishment that enter are subject to an independent audit by our partner, the Sustainable Restaurant Association. The winning establishment pays homage to the culinary heritage of the land it sits on, with sustainability and ethical farming built into its very essence. Now, to present this award, we welcome the chef owner, from a best of the best restaurant that topped this list back in 2019. From Mirazur, please welcome the one and only Mauro Colagreco. <laughs> Hola a todos. Hello everybody. I'm so happy to to give this hour special hour very important in our industry. So the Flor de Caña sustainable restaurant go to a restaurant for the 51 to the 100 list based in Cape Town South Africa is Finn. Woo!
Congratulations to chef and founder Peter Tempelhoff, who has long been passionate about food that is not only good for those who eat it, but also for those that grow it, for the wider community and the planet. Now, we continue to look to the future with our second award before we plunge into the countdown itself. This is the Resi One to Watch Award, which highlights a rising star restaurant on the global scene. Let's take a closer look at the winner. I was a pretty bad kid, and my mom told me I was going on a vacation to Nigeria and ended up leaving me there for two years. I learned not only to respect my elders, but to respect the earth, respect where my food comes from. <sighs> Welcome to Tatiana. My name is Kwame Onwachi. My hometown is the Bronx, New York. I'm the executive chef and owner at Tatiana here in New York City. I was in the kitchen pretty early. At a certain age, it was like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. My mom is a chef. She was out a lot, and my sister would feed me. It was like, you know, Tatiana, please can I have chicken wings and pork fried rice. Tatiana, please can I have a bacon, egg, and cheese. That Tatiana mind frame is here. It's about nurturing. It's about taking care of one another. Working at Tatiana inspires me to continue to see value in myself and my culture. I've been given the opportunity to mirror what he has already brought to fruition, and it's really exciting to have the ability to be able to do that. Lincoln Center. You know, I don't think they've ever seen anything like this in here. Before Lincoln Center was old San Juan Hill, it was an Afro-Caribbean neighborhood that was pushed out. The menu is a collection of my childhood as well as a couple of staff members as well. If a dish tells a story, it has a soul. You're not just cooking for perfect seasoning. It's a New York story in a place where you don't really see people like us and our food really like on a pedestal. What I want my guests to feel when they leave Tatiana is their cheeks hurting from laughing, you know, maybe their feet hurting from dancing a little bit. It's a place where everyone's welcome and you're gonna have fun here. I hope this is a restaurant that we look back in 100 years and it's like, oh, we really did something. Now, unfortunately, the plane that Kwame was catching from Aspen, Colorado was canceled, and despite his best efforts, he was unable to make it here on time. So we would like his longtime friend, Jamila Robinson, to accept the trophy on his behalf. So the One to Watch Award goes to Tatiana by Kwame Onwachi. Please welcome on stage Tatiana's Jamila Robinson. Thank you. Picture over here. Thank you very much, Amila. Thank you. Thank you, Jamila, for representing, and congratulations again to the Tatiana team. After those two special awards, we are ready for the list of the world's 50 best restaurants 2023 sponsored by San Pellegrino and Aquapana. Let's do this. We start, of course, at number 50, which takes us immediately to the other side of the world to land in Hong Kong and taste the famous flowery crap at the chairman. <laughs> This popular Cantonese spot, previously named number one in Asia, follows a singular ingredient-driven path to reinvent Chinese dishes with Wok Keng Tung at the stove and restaurateur Danny Yib behind the scenes. Number 49 is a new entry to the list from Mexico City. Please give a round of applause to Rosetta. <laughs> With 
none other than the world's best famous Best female chef 2023 at the helm, Rosetta, is cementing its spot in the culinary firmament thanks to its well-researched, vegetable-forward and utterly delicious dishes. It's another first-time appearance at number 48, this time from France. Welcome to La Grenouillère. In the charming town of La Madeleine sur Montreuil, chef Alexandre Gautier spins every ingredient he uses into gold in a striking dining room reminiscent of a modern art gallery. Returning to the list after debuting last year, number 47 is based in the Peruvian capital of Lima. It's Maita. Serving up Peru's colorful pantry with a special focus on sustainability, chef Jaime Pesaque's flagship is quickly becoming a new global favorite. The new entries keep coming, and at number 46, from Dubai, it's Orfali Bros Bistro. <laughs> Recently voted number one in the MENA region, this venue takes culinary storytelling to the next level. The unique life of Syrian brothers Mohammed, Wasim and Omar is told through their surprising dishes. For number 45, we travel to the German capital of Berlin for Nobelharz and Schmutzig. <laughs> A pinch of irreverence and a passion for ingredients from the greater Berlin region set this restaurant apart, as well as the charismatic owner-chef duo of Billy Wagner and Mietja Scheifer. Number 44 is one of New York's most beloved restaurants. I hope I say it right. Le Bernardin. This French fine dining institution from chef Eric Repair never goes out of fashion. It is primarily thanks to its always innovative, internationally inspired seafood creations. Heading south across the American continent for number 43 from Bogota, it's Leo. This one-of-a-kind restaurant takes Colombian biodiversity and finds myriad ways to make it delicious, led by chef Leonor Espinosa and sommelier Laura Hernández Espinosa. It continues to go from strength to strength. We're landing in Italy's truffle capital for number 42, based in Alba. Let's hear it for Piazza Duomo. <laughs> Let Chef Enrico Gripa guide you on a voyage through space and time led by taste, color, texture and aroma. Here, avant-garde creativity meets local ecosystems and ingredients. Staying in Italy for number 41, it's Le Calandre. A bastion of Italian hospitality, Le Calandre pays homage to the cuisine of the Benedetto region. Chef Massimiliano Aliamo designs dishes that awaken long-forgotten memories or create wholly new ones. Now that we're 10 down, 
We pause briefly for another special award, and this is the first of the night that is for an individual as opposed to a restaurant. It's time to name the world's best pastry chef 2023. This award is sponsored by Sosa Ingredients, so please welcome to the stage from Sosa, Daniel Rio. Hola, Daniel. Buenas noches. The winner of this award demonstrates that the art of pastry and desserts is not limited to all things sweets, as she utilizes native vegetables, spices and herbs in her delicious dishes. It is my pleasure to reveal that the award for the world's best pastry chef 2023, sponsored by Sosa, goes to Pia Salafar. Pia runs her restaurant Nueva in Quito with her chef husband Alejandro Chamorro, where they offer a true taste of Ecuador across a 15-course tasting menu. <laughs> Back into the countdown, number 40 sees us return to Berlin for restaurant Tim Rauer. Energetic chef Tim Rauer serves up a fusion of flavors inspired by Japan, Thailand, and China, all injected with his tongue-in-cheek sense of fun. Based in Antwerp, where this same ceremony took place less than two years ago, number 39 is the Jane. <laughs> Nick Brill's restaurant is a true temple to gastronomy, combining Belgium ingredients, wide-ranging inspiration, and one of the best playlists you might ever hear. A short flight to London, and we find number 38. It's the Clove Club. Isaac McHale has been impressing the capital city's discerning diners for years with dishes such as the classic raw Orkney scallop and the latest edition of crispy pork jowl with apple. It's a new entry at number 37. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Tokyo's Cezanne. Still 
Less than two years old, two years old, Cezanne combines the glamour of the Four Seasons Hotel with chef Daniel Calvert's modern French style that keeps diners coming back for more. Paris debuts a new restaurant in the list at number 36. Bravo for Plenitude. Chef Arnaud Donkel's approach has more in common with an artist or chemist than your classic chef, but his off-the-moment fine French menus are only more delicious as a result. Another intermission in the countdown for an award that seeks to recognize the vital role that drinks programs play in the overall restaurant experience, something many of us get behind, I'm sure. This is the ultimate prize for sommeliers and it is supported by our very own Spanish wine company, Veronia. So please welcome the presenter of this trophy from Veronia, Diego Talavera Gaborieu. <laughs> Hola, Diego. Buenas noches. The winner of this title has rapidly built a stellar reputation at a very special restaurant. He comes from this very country, Spain, and tackles the enviable task of pairing his chef's ultra-imaginative dishes with the perfect liquid accompaniment. It's a job he carries out with the utmost skill and charm. The winner of the Baronia World's Best Sommelier Award 2023 from Diverso in Madrid is Miguel Ángel Villar! Enhorabuena, Miguel Ángel. Enhorabuena. Congratulations. I don't think he expected that. Miguel Ángel follows the steps of the legendary Josep Roca in taking this prize, which was introduced for the first time last year. I think he did not expect that. Right, back into the countdown of the very best dining experiences around the world. Number 35 takes us to London for Ikoyi. <laughs> Installed in its beautiful new home, Ikoyi continues to defy definitions just as much as it pleases palates. Herbs, spices, and techniques are gleaned from across the world, but proteins and fresh produce hail from the British Isles. We're heading to the beach for number 34. From Senigallia in Italia, it's Uliati. <laughs> Thank you. 
This place was once little more than a beach shack, but talented siblings Mauro and Katja Uliasi have turned it into one of the country's most influential restaurants with provocative creations inspired by sea land exchanges. Colombia is back with another restaurant at the countdown at number 33. From Bogota, its new entry, El Chato. <laughs> Don't, don't mistake Chef Álvaro Clavijo's simple eatery for, what, for anything less than what it is, a temple to flavor combinations as diverse as his country's pantry. The unassuming Slovenian town of Kovarid is home to number 32, Hisha Franco. <laughs> Former world's best female chef Anna Roche specializes in intricately made fresh pastas and the produce of the stunning Socha Valley, her wonderful destination restaurant. How many restaurants spend 25 years at the top? Number 31 is just celebrating this anniversary. From San Sebastián here in Spain, well done to Mugaritz. <laughs> And he didn't want to stand up, huh? Chef Antoni Luis Aduriz, a true icon of the culinary world, cooks up emotions, reflections, and a little bit of irreverence into each of each of one of his eye-catching creations. It's time for another very special trophy presentation, namely for the world's best female chef 2023. To introduce this award, we are delighted to welcome the recipient of this prize in 2022 from Restaurant Leo in Colombia. It's Leonor Espinosa. <laughs> Everyone. Primero, quiero decir y pedir a la fuerza latinoamericana que se levante esta noche. for me to give um, the great award the best the world best female chef to my Latin American sister and friend and colleague Elena Regadas. Soy Elena Reigadas, chef y propietaria del restaurante Rosetta y la panadería Rosetta en la Ciudad de México. Y este año he sido elegida como The World's Best Female Chef 2023. 
sea, las cosas más importantes de la vida muchas veces suceden a través de la comida. Como cocinera soy muy suertuda de tener tantos sabores, tantos ingredientes. Hay tal biodiversidad en este país que, pues que es infinito. O sea, yo no termino de encontrar nuevos ingredientes, nuevos sabores, nuevas técnicas. Soy una persona que le gusta mucho observar, me gusta mucho observar la naturaleza, sus ciclos, poder ver, ver una pintura y ver de cómo en un momento se ponía una mesa, eh, me da mucho, finalmente me, me inspira, me ayuda mucho en mi, en mi forma de cocinar, o sea, me determina mucho. Pues para mí este premio es para todas esas mujeres que por milenios han estado en las cocinas. Y mis abuelas y mi madre son quienes me enseñaron y rápidamente entendí que yo podía expresarme y sobre todo dar mi amor y dar mi, mi cariño a través de los alimentos, o sea, a través de cocinar. Lo que quiero es que continúe mi curiosidad y la alegría que me da el cocinar y el recibir a la gente siga siendo de tanta felicidad. Eso es lo que yo deseo. Enhorabuena, enhorabuena Elena, congratulations to Elena on this momentous achievement and all that she does for women in the hospitality industry. And thank you to Leo also, what an inspirational duo. We keep eating our way around the world and now at number 30 from Stockholm in Sweden, we find Franzen. Chef Bjorn Fransen presents Nordic cuisine that marries classic and modern techniques with Asian notes, served over multiple floors of a historic townhouse. Number 29 takes us to the south-south of the world from Santiago de Chile. It's Borago. Years of tireless research into Chile's biodiverse ecosystems have given chef Rodolfo Guzman an almost limited arsenal of flavors to fashion his unique, colorful, and memorable menus. Next up is a new entry at 28, and it comes from the 2021 winner of the World's Best Female Chef Award. It's Cole in Lima! <laughs> With a menu dominated by bright and bold dishes that pay homage to Peruvian produce, Cole is helmed by Pia León, whose culinary ingenuity is now established on the global stage. We are heading to Tokyo.
for the second time tonight at number 27. It's Florilège. <laughs> Drawing delicious bridges between French and Japanese cuisine, chef Hiroyasu Wakate is ready to take his cuisine to the next level at his restaurant's new location coming soon. It's a timeless favorite now, at number 26. Surrounded by the Alps in Switzerland, it's Schloss Schausenstein. <laughs> This is a true fairy tale dining experience hostel, hosted in the castle by a prince of cooking. Andreas Caminava expect exciting interpretations of modern Swiss cook cooking in his dreamy setting. We are at the halfway mark in the countdown, would you believe? We are taking a momentary pause to step away from the list. Hello again, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> 50 Best has long sought not only to recognize the immense talent and dedication of the teams delivering memorable dining experiences uh, across the world, but also it seeks to encourage discovery and diversity both within the hospitality sector and among the wider food-loving public. a certain kind of agriculture and the whole ecosystem around. It's about nurturing, it's about taking care of one another. Bests was the magic little thing that changed everything. I genuinely believe that lists like the 50 Best have helped open up the world like that.
So this leads us on neatly on to a couple of very important awards that go beyond high-end kitchens and dining rooms and speak to the power of those in hospitality to affect positive change. So in 2021, 50 Best launched the Champions of Change initiative to identify and celebrate unsung heroes of the food and drink world. People driving meaningful action and creating blueprints for a better planet. Each recipient of a Champions of Change Award receives a financial donation for their projects as well as the chance to raise the profile of their work or cause. We announced the Champions of Change winners earlier this month and we would like to acknowledge them in person, if possible, by inviting them up here in a moment. I'll explain more because actually one pair of uh, Champions of Change winners are running across the City of Arts and Sciences to be here as we speak. So I'm trying to stretch this out a bit to see if they actually make it. They have come all the way from LA, so I really want them to come on stage. However, our first Champions of Change winner for 2023 hails from Morocco, where her Amal Social Enterprise Project has helped hundreds of marginalized women build their confidence, their skills, and their futures through food. Our second Champions of Change winners are a duo who, as I mentioned, are based in Los Angeles. So thank you, I hope, for traveling all this way, hopefully going to crash through the doors any second. They launched No Us Without You LA back in 2021 to support the undocumented workers who form the backbone of so much of the hospitality sector in the US. And they're literally running down the stairs. But they're going to wait. <laughs> just wait, just wait. Because first, I would like. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait your moment. First, I would like to congratulate our first Champions of Change winner, Nora Fitzgerald Mellison. <laughs> Nora, wherever you are, please come onto the stage. You don't have to run them. And we'd also like to congratulate for their speedy entrance from No Us Without You LA, Damien Diaz and Oton Nolasco. Guys, come and have a photo here. Now one together. One more together. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Congratulations to Nora and Othan and Damien for making it here just on time. We return to the official countdown of the world's 50 best restaurants 2023, sponsored by San Pellegrino and Aquapana. At number 25, we traveled to Lisbon, well done to 
del canto. Under high vaulted ceilings, José Avellis offers up a vision of contemporary Portuguese cuisine where every dish tells a story, whether it's about the country, the restaurant's origins, or the chef himself. It's another enduring favorite at number 24, this time from Paris. Well done, Septime. Septim pioneered the seasonal hipster bistro movement that later spread across Europe's capitals. Sustainability, modernity and accessibility are the key concept, concepts driven by chef Bertrand Gribault. I hope I said it right. After staring up a storm over the last couple of years, it finally debuts on the list this year at number 23. From London, it's... Gol! <laughs> Powerhouse Mexican chef Santiago Lastra applies the ancient techniques he grew up with the British produce, taking diners on a tour of Central America without leaving West London. We're here in Spain for number 22, based in Getaria. It's El Cano! <laughs> Aitor Arregui is carrying out on his father's legacy of setting new standards of grilling. The menu takes in cod throats and marinated lobster, but don't leave without trying the whole grilled turbot. Number 21 takes us back to Tokyo's, Tokyo's bustling streets. Well done to Den! Distilling the Japanese Kaiseki experience and the Omo Tenashi spirit of selfless hospitality into modern forms, Chef Sayu Hasegawa's den is at the pinnacle of Tokyo's dining scene. We only have 20 more to go, but before that, it's time for one of the most important awards of the evening. This is the Icon Award 2023. To present the award, please welcome someone who is pretty iconic himself, the ever-dynamic Massimo Bottura. Wow, what an honor. What an honor. Guys, you know, Let's watch a video before. Let's watch a video. Bueno, yo termino en, en la cocina un poco por, por casualidad, por decisión de mis padres, ¿no? Vieron que ya no tenía un don para los estudios, ¿no? hay gente que, que es muy buena estudiando, yo era bastante anodino y circunstancias de la vida quisieron que acabara en, en una escuela de cocina con todo lo que suponía. Hola, soy Andoni Luis Aduriz, cocinero de Mugaritz, ganador del Icon Award 2023 de The World 50 Best Restaurant. 
bueno, al final, por mucho mundo que tenga uno, por mucha experiencia, kilómetros, vueltas que haya dado, eh, uno no deja de ser de donde, de donde ha nacido. ¿no? Eh, las nostalgias vienen de ahí, son las raíces de aquello que a uno le hizo feliz. ¿no? Para mí, el, eh, mi tierra, Euskadi, el País Vasco, lógicamente está en mi ADN. Eh, y creo que es una de las cosas más bonitas que, que puedo aportar a, a la pluralidad de un mundo que cada vez eh, más estrecho eh, consigue, consigue igualar tantas ideas, formas de pensamiento. Bueno, hay que entender que el proceso creativo de Mugaritz responde a una cosa muy básica, muy elemental, que es la capacidad de soñar, cosas que no existen. ¿no? Nos inspiran las coordenadas intelectuales, eh, eh, las coordenadas que, que de alguna forma eh, caminan hacia un horizonte desconocido. ¿no? Es extraordinario que alguien considere que, que te mereces un reconocimiento así. So, do we have to wait for the prize? What would we have to wait? I just have to say something. Un bacio ad Andoni, porque... So, we, we grew up together, you know, behind the scene of the Congress in uh, San Sebastian, 23 years ago, and Madrid Fusion, and Identita, everywhere. And we became friends, and such a... Oh my God, I'm, I feel butterfly in my stomach. Andoni, I love you so much. And, you know, it's like, it's an honor to prize a friend of mine. Andoni, iconic award. Thorionak, Andoni, Thorionak, congratulations. What a wonderful film, an amazing man. Congratulations to Andoni. Enhorabuena. Thank you so much, Massimo. That was a little speech. Only 20 restaurants to go, and we celebrate entering the 20s with a local favorite. From Denia, here in the Valencia region, it's Kike da Costa. <laughs> Paying homage to the fish, seafood and rice dishes of the Levant, Quique da Costa's tasting menus artfully combine the traditional with the modern through theatrical tapas-inspired courses. Number 19 is a true institution for steak grilled to perfection. Based in Buenos Aires, it's Don Julio. <laughs> Owner sommelier Pablo Rivero and chef Guido Tassi are united in their devotion to sourcing top quality grass-fed cuts, which are kissed by flames and served alongside some of the best bottles in all Latin America. It's a bastion of hospitality at number 18. From Vienna, well done to Stai Redek.
Heinz and Birgit Reitbauer have created the go-to spot for cutting-edge cooking in Austria, juxtaposing modern architecture with food firmly rooted in the humble produce of the Styrian region. The chef behind number 17 is truly back with Bang from Bangkok. It's none other than Gagan Anand. His mission has always been to push the limits of conventional dining, and Gagan's latest iteration is truer to form than ever, drawing on molecular gastronomy, complex techniques, and international inspiration. Let us travel back to Italy for number 16, based in Castel di Sangro. It's Reale! <laughs> Located in a 16th century monastery, Chef Nico Romito's restaurant is pioneering the Italian food of tomorrow. Expect precise plates that are minimal in presentation, but max out on flavor. Before we move on to the final 15, we're going to reward one restaurant which provides outstanding hospitality to its guests, making them feel welcome, but also anticipating their needs and taking them on a magical gastronomic ride. This is Jin Mayer Art of Hospitality Award. And just to be clear, it is presented separately to the countdown as the winning restaurant may be yet to come in the ranking. And to present the award, we welcome another chef whose restaurant is part of the best of the best, having topped the ranking in 2017. He is now leading the world in showcasing plant-based cuisine at 11 Madison Park in New York. Please welcome Daniel Hoom. <laughs> Great to be up here and a great honor to give this award. It's a restaurant in Copenhagen. Uh, it's Alchemist. Congratulations, congratulations to Chef Rasmus Monk, GM Lika Metzger, and their brilliant team. Right, we're making another stop in Bangkok for number 15. This one is also a new entry. It's Le Doux. Mm. 
named number one in Asia's 50 best restaurants in March, Chef Ton's super popular venue honors Thai produce and the country's admired culinary heritage in a contemporary setting. Number 14 is about to get its own special moment because we're not only about to reveal which venue takes this position, but also which individual award its chef is picking up tonight. This trophy is the only peer-voted award in the program. It's the Estrella Dams Chef's Choice, Choice Award. This, the recipient of this award is the chef behind number 14 in the world's 50 best restaurants 2023, which is also the highest ranked restaurant in its own continent, so double trophy. This restaurant matches exquisite ingredient combinations with wonderful hospitality in an elegant setting. The chef is a clear leader in his kitchen and in his region, but also allows those around him to blossom. Now, to present the Estrella Dams Chef's Choice Award, we are honored to be joined by one of the best of the best and the senior brother in the Roca family. Former, from former winner, El Teler de Can Roca, it's Joan Roca. Buenas noches. Good evening. So, it's a great pleasure to announce this special award. The restaurant at number 14 is also the winner of the best restaurant in Asia title. It is Odette. And And the winner of the Estrella Dam Chef, Chef Choice Award 2023, Julian Royer. Congratulations on a double win, one for the restaurant and one for its chef patron, Julien Roger. And thank you to Joan Roca for gracing us with this present too. We're inching closer to the top 10, and at number 13, we travel to Mexico City for Pujol. One of the Mexican capital's most recognizable and enduring eateries, Enrique Olveras Pujol, continues to inspire diners with ground-breaking dishes strongly rooted in ancestral ingredients and techniques. Continuing our travel across Latin America, it's number, tw number 12 is based in Sao Paulo. It's a Casa do Porco. <laughs>
created by Jefferson and Janaina Rueda, a casa de porco uses every last part of the pig, from bacon to tongue, and a melt-in-the-mouth tartar that fuses aged bone marrow and mushrooms. At number 11, we have the second of our Destination Awards of the evening. This is a new entry to the list as well, and has wowed diners with its contemporary take on Indian dishes, delivered with imagination and panache. Having recently relocated to a new space, this is the best restaurant in the Middle East and Africa for 2023. At number 11, congratulations to Tresin Studio. Congratulations. Well done, indeed. Well done. And on we go, plunging into the top ten. The awards come thick and fast now because this is another new entry. Not only that, it is this year's highest new entry, which merits a trophy. And this one is sponsored by concierge partner Aspire Lifestyles. So, to present the award from Aspire Lifestyles, welcome to Wayne Conte. <laughs> This restaurant, this restaurant has been taking its home city by storm in recent years, led by its charismatic and self-taught self -taught chef patron, who only took the professional kitchen relatively late in life, but with tremendous success. At number 10 in the ranking, the winner of this year's highest new entry award, sponsored by Aspire Lifestyles from Paris, is Table by Bruno Berju. <laughs> Felicitations, Bruno. What an achievement for Bruno and his team, not only entering the list, but doing so in the top 10. 
Mexico City is home to the restaurant this year voted number nine. Well done to Quintonil. <laughs> The Farm to Fork Force is stronger chef Jorge Vallejo's venue, which expresses the country's pantry with top quality, sustainable ingredients sourced from gardens and orchards across Mexico. I love that kiss, by the way. Number eight also brings with it another double award, this time as the highest ranked restaurant in its continent and also as the highest climber, an award sponsored by liquor partner Bila Massa. This restaurant has definitely been on the rise, having ascended an impressive 25 spots since last year. To present this award from the family behind Bila Massa, please welcome Sara Massa. Not only has this restaurant captured the heart of diners within its city, but its food and hospitality resonate around the world. Led by a husband and wife team, whose brilliance is only matched by their humility, this is a counter dining spot based in New York City that is serving the finest Korean dishes on the planet. That makes it the best restaurant in North America and the winner of the Villa Massa Highest Climber Award. Congratulations to Atomics! <laughs> Elliot Park, who got a little bit emotional, and JP are a brilliant team representing both South Korea and the US in this achievement and demonstrate the love can take you wherever you want. Isn't that true? <laughs> Number seven is a culinary darling of the recent period from Italy's Gardone Riviera. It's Lido 84. And being siblings too, brothers Ricardo and Giancarlo Camanini have found a winning formula at their charming restaurant on the shores of Lake Como, where intense research is conveyed in show-stopping Italian dishes. Traveling to the other side of the world, number six, based in Lima, it's Maido! <laughs> Thank you. 
a delicious assault on the senses that combines Peruvian and Japanese cultural heritages, Misha Sumura's Maido is rising Nikkei cuisine to its most elevated heights. Now, we take another significant pause before we complete proceedings with the final five restaurants. We have an important moment regarding the best of the best, and to preside over this, allow me to introduce onto the stage the managing director, 50 Best, Tim Brooke Webb. Good evening. Okay. I will try not to hold up proceedings too much, but it is important to acknowledge those restaurants that have reached the pinnacle of this list over the last two decades, meaning that they, ha that they are part of the best of the best and are no longer eligible for the annual vote. So those in our Hall of Fame are El Bui, the first ever number one in the list of the world's 50 best restaurants back in 2002. It was, El Bui was followed by Thomas Keller's The French Laundry. And, and then came Heston's The Fat Duck. After a period of El Bui dominance, it was finally succeeded by the original Noma. And then came the iconic El Cella de Can Roca, not so far from here. The, the Roca brothers took the restaurant to number one on two occasions, followed by the inspirational Osteria Francescana, led by Massimo Batura, which was also a two-time winner interspersed with the inimitable 11 Madison Park, led by Daniel Hum. In, in 2019, Mauro Colagreco's Mirazur was voted number one. And then in 2021, after a pandemic-induced break, the latest and possibly last iteration of NOMA topped the ranking. So we'd like to recognize and congratulate the teams behind all of those extraordinary establishments that have enhanced our dining world and frequently used their profile to help promote positive change. So let me ask representatives of these restaurants to stand and take an ovation. Let's hear it for the best of the best, everyone. Now, now it is time to inaugurate the latest stellar restaurant into this Hall of Fame. Last year's winner was from the city of Copenhagen, and it's a singularly brilliant restaurant with a distinct identity and simply flawless execution. So, from the world's best restaurant, 2022, and now part of the best of the best, please welcome on stage Rasmus Koford and Soren Ledet of Geranium.
Congratulations, Geranium, for entering the best of the best. Thank you, Tim. We've heard this name before tonight, but now we discover its ranking from Copenhagen. Number five is Alchemist. Enter Alchemist and simply let the show begin. Chef Rasmus Monk's immersive venue will turn your expectations of dining squarely on the head, mixing theater, gastronomy, and social messaging to brilliant effect. Where will number four take us? The answer is to the rolling hills of Spain's Basque country for Asador Echevarri. <laughs> Essential bath experience Asador Echevarri is famously led by self taught chef Vitor Arginzonis, whose adjustable grills can't stop turning out global favorites such as chorizo, chuleta steak, or even grilled caviar. We're entering the top three. Tension is building. I can feel the electricity from here. And we are staying in Spain at number three with Diverso! <laughs> Enhorabuena, David. Enhorabuena también porque vas a ser papá. He's going to be a dad. So congratulations for that too. <laughs> the irreverence of punk and abstract art meet cutting-edge modern Spanish cuisine fused with Asian influences at Madrid Diverso, dreamt up by David Muñoz. The creativity on display here is difficult to match. Now, everybody, we're down to the final two in the world's 50 best restaurants 2023. We're actually going to do things a little bit differently this year, so now it's the time to concentrate. Two restaurants remain, and each is winning its respective destination award, meaning it is the top-ranked venue in its particular continent. We will present those destination awards first, but in no particular order. And only after that, we will announce which restaurant is number one and named the world's best restaurant 2023. So, we're talking about one from Europe and one from South America. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> when we call out the name of your restaurant, you will come here on stage, up those steps, to take a picture, okay? And receive your trophy. So, the first one of these two restaurants hails from Barcelona, here in Spain, its three chefs, all alumni of the famed El Bulli, have forged their own path to greatness, creating a mesmerizing, create, creative, and stimulated gastronomic adventure for diners. The best restaurant in Europe 2023 is Disfrutar. Buena, una foto.
Congratulations for Disfrutar, a lovely name for a restaurant. It actually means enjoy. The next restaurant is a multiple number one in Latin America's 50 best. For more than a decade, it has showcased its country's produce, celebrated its extraordinary biodiversity, and created a warm and deeply memorable experience for its guests. The best restaurant in South America 2023 is Central! Congratulations, one of those two will be returning to the stage in just a few minutes. Yes, we are building the tension. Before we confirm which of these final duo is named the world's best restaurant, let's bring on stage the person that will present the trophy to the number one. The prestigious award is sponsored by 50 Best's longtime main partner, San Pellegrino. So please welcome to the stage from San Pellegrino, Stefano Bolognese. Now, it's time to reveal which of the two stellar restaurants that, have just encountered, that we have just encountered has been voted at this year's number one. Stefano is here on stage to present the trophy, so I think we're ready. I am thrilled to announce that number one in this year's edition of the world's 50 best restaurants and therefore the world's best restaurant 2023 sponsored by San Pellegrino and Aquapana is... Central! <laughs>
words. Hello. Thank you so much for, for everybody who's here, um, or to all uh, supporters today, uh, for, to the people far away, to peers, colleagues, mentors over there. Wow. Um, to Valencia, this beautiful place, huge place, beautiful city. Thank you so much. Uh, to the 50, 50 best. Beautiful organization, thank you. Uh, uh, the team, guys, you are fantastic. Um, you've been doing amazing for so many years. Uh, oh, then, sure. yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not easy now, nowadays. Uh, there's there's some, some lack of motivation nowadays in the world. This world is getting crazy and things are moving too quick. And sometimes there is no consequence between what, what is said and what is, what is done. But uh, we should keep, um, I mean, like moving to uh, provide and give a consistency and, and uh, credibility to this industry uh, from South America, from Peru. Uh, thank you, Peru. Thank you, Lima. Now, one more. And yeah. This is, uh, guys, this is, uh, um, this is not about, uh, of course, being number one. This is not about uh, competition. This is not about being the best. This is about um, uh, what we do every single day to, lo uh, to love what we do, uh, to keep achieving uh, our beautiful goals, and just looking for the truth. Thank you so much. Yo, yo voy a aprovechar en dar unas palabras para el equipo, para el que está aquí y el que está esperándonos en Lima. Gracias, porque hemos venido trabajando muy duro, muy duro, pero siempre dándonos una pausa y mirando hacia atrás para ver los pasos que hemos venido realizando y reflexionándolos. A todo el equipo de Casa Tupac, de Central, de Mil, de Coye, gracias por sumarse. Eh, a esta aventura que es central, a sus familias también, porque aprendieron a, a conllevar este camino junto con nosotros. Por supuesto a ti, porque eres perseverancia, constancia. Creo que eres un ejemplo único y de qué sirve trabajar tanto si finalmente no hay un camino o no hay una guía al final. Así que, gracias. huge thank you so very much um, in matter we say we follow some steps uh, which are think before you plan uh, plan everything you do and design uh, think about every step you take forward and look back and always adapt because it is it would be naive to think that you can maintain the status quo you have to continuous continuously keep moving forward but reviewing what you have done so thank you so very much for this, for making us uh, be in the spotlight tonight. Tomorrow we're going to go home and we're going to celebrate with our folks. Uh, thank you. Guys, any one of you? Sam? Can I make it? Can I make it longer, show? Or? Whatever. Yeah. You <laughs> uh, we are so honored to receive this uh, recognition and awards tonight, and especially I want to say thank you to Chef uh, Virgilio and thanks to Peru. I have uh, watched a lot of Peruvian chefs who work with local community and connecting with them and then try to make as a solid team in whole country. And I believe that this, uh, this recognition gave a lot of the motivation for everyone around the world 
to continue their pursuit of the connection. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations again to the team, Virgilio, Pia, Malena, and the whole central team here and back in Lima. May I just say, the atmosphere here was amazing. You truly are happy for your peers. You have the best chefs and nice people. So, congratulations to Central, congratulations to all the restaurant teams represented on the lists and celebrating here tonight. You are all winners, all the chefs from the featured restaurants, so all those with the red scarves, as well as the best of best, best of the best in the purple ones, please make your way to the stage for the group photo right now. For everyone else, the party continues back at Calle Mayor with the press conference taking place soon on the terrace outside over there. I'm Olivia Frejo. It's been a pleasure being here with you. Thank you for forming part of the eighth form of art. Have a great evening. <laughs>